Hello, I'm Greg Wheeler, the Chief Building Official for the City of Thornton, Colorado, and I'm the current President of the International Code Council Board of Directors. In September of 2013, Colorado was hit with a storm that resulted in flooding for most of our front range. It affected areas north of Fort Collins to south of Colorado Springs and areas east of Greeley to the west of Boulder County. 19,000 homes were damaged and over 1,800 homes were destroyed. The state's transportation system was affected with 30 state bridges that were destroyed and another 20 that were severely damaged. Many roads were underwater or destroyed which caused several of our towns to be completely isolated and the only means of transportation was by airlift. Join us for the Sustainability of Membership Council's Building Safety Month video on the 2013 Colorado floods and how the Colorado Chapters Disaster Mitigation Committee responded. Hi, I'm Tom Pitchford. I am uh, past president of the Colorado Chapter of ICC and I've been the chair for the Disaster Mit Committee for the state of Colorado, Colorado Chapter, for, oh, too many years now, probably 2008. Um, in 2013, we had record-breaking uh, rains here that caused flooding throughout the state, um, and our disaster mitigation team was called out across the state to help deal with those disasters. We had uh, 287 people within the state of Colorado that were called out to help with the disaster as far as doing uh, disaster assessment uh, inspections. We were out in the field. The rain started on a Friday evening and by Saturday afternoon in the storms we were already out in some of the northern areas of the state responding to those uh, requests for help. Um, we were involved heavily, I was involved very heavily for about six weeks, um, seven days a week, 24 hours a day and we were involved for two and a half months on a whole. We had people out. Uh, we actually had one team that went up into the mountains and was up there for over a two week period and uh, was responding and it was the first time we actually put a permit tech in the field to also help out with those disasters. Hello, my name is Gary Goodell. I served as the building official for Boulder County, Colorado from 1983 through 1997 and then again from 2010 through 2016. It was during that latter period that we experienced our 2013 extreme rain and flooding event. The entire county flooding flooded in varying degrees and depending on the location, it was described as anywhere from a 100 year to a 1000 year storm. One weather service described the flooding as biblical in nature. We lost over 200 homes and businesses with thousands of other structures receiving varying degrees of damage, ranging from water damage to portions of structures collapsing into streams. Although all of the many creeks in the, in the county flooded, the North St. Vrain, which demolished much of the town of Lyons, James Creek, which did enormous damage to the town of Jamestown, and Four Mile Creek, another stream bounded by a narrow mountain canyon were notable insofar as the amount of sheer power and devastation that was displayed. Flooding was not the only hazard. Rock falls and debris flows also occurred. Some homeowners were so traumatized by spending a night in or near their homes that they left and never returned. Boulder County is not new to disasters. The Black Tiger Fire destroyed over 40 homes in 1989, and the Four Mile Canyon Fire destroyed 169 homes in 2010. Partially as a result of these and other disasters, the City of Boulder, Boulder County, and many other first responders share a state-of-the-art Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, and a well-developed Incident Command System, or ICS, to deal with disaster response and recovery. Boulder County has three main initiatives as an org organization, public service, collaboration, and sustainability. Public service includes an emphasis on customer service, but also includes a great deal of pride in being public servants 
and doing absolutely the best we can under any circumstance. Collaboration includes doing our best to work well with anyone who might be a stakeholder in any process or incident, whether it is other departments in the county, our citizens, or other levels of government, including the academic community, special districts, state and federal agencies, and nonprofit charitable organizations like the Red Cross. Sustainability can have many meanings, but certainly includes being in it for the long term. Boulder County has really put its money where its mouth is in this regard, all the way from lead platinum building projects to the use of solar power and biofuels, to fuel efficient hybrid and electric vehicles, to an in-house zero waste program, and many other programs, all of which are fully described in the county's environmental sustainability plan. One of the plan's goals is that all new residential buildings are to be net zero by 2022, and all new commercial buildings are to be net zero by 2028. Resilience is also considered a part of sustainability, with structures expected to resist, survive, and recover from all but the most extreme disasters. During the response and recovery to the 2013 floods, the county's three initiatives were thoroughly modeled. All available resources at the local, state, and federal levels were fully utilized. This included calling in a group of certified damage assessment inspectors from the Colorado chapter of ICC on literally a day's notice. State and federal funds were sought and obtained for buyouts of properties in flood prone areas so that homes would not be rebuilt in hazardous areas. The county also created a one-stop flood recovery center so that staff from various departments and agencies were available to people impacted by the flooding. Although building permits were waived for, re for the repair of minor damage and fees were discounted for other repairs, all new work was required to meet current code requirements, including the county's floodplain regulations and the county's above code Boulder County Build Smart program. Some homeowners took the opportunity to rebuild to an even higher standard of energy saving and sustainability. Boulder County also does its best to learn from its experiences. Debriefings held after the floods looked at what went well, what didn't go so well, and how operations could be improved for future events. New plans and procedures continue to be put into place to effectively deal with future disasters in a way that reflects the county's core values of public service, collaboration, and sustainability. Hi, Tim Swanson, City of Greeley, Chief Building Official. 2013, during the floods, we had an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Evans to perform all their inspections. Although the City of Greeley didn't have any flooding within our city limits, it was all to the east side of us out in unincorporated Weld County. Since we were doing the inspections for the City of Evans, we, the inspections for the flood damage structures fell to us automatically. Uh, proved to be challenging the first week or so as the flood waters were very slow receding. Uh, getting into areas, we had to just wait till the areas cleared and we could get in there. It was muddy, mucky, dirty. Uh, as, as, as we identified all the damage structures, which included two entire mobile home parks, uh, moved into the rebuilding phase and we also performed all those inspections for the city of Evans. It was a long process. It, I think it probably took upwards of two to two to three years to get all the all the flood damage inspections done. Hi, uh, my name is Mark Erlay. I'm uh, with the Pueblo Regional Building Department. I'm also um, past president of the Colorado Chapter for the International Code Council and part of the disaster mitigation team. Um, I was called upon in 2013 for the Estes Park floods. And uh, as an inspector, uh, our duties were to uh, go from house to house that were affected by the flood and assess the buildings. What we did is uh, we went and uh, went inside the house or we 
try to find the house and we placed placards uh, on the, the condition of the house. We had a, uh, a green card, a yellow card, and a red card. If we felt the uh, building was safe to occupy, we would place a green card on uh, the buildings. Um, if we felt that it was um, okay to enter the buildings for the homeowner to go in there and collect their belongings, and we weren't sure if it was too safe to occupy or not, we would place a yellow card on there. Um, if we saw the building uh, was unsafe to occupy, we would place a red placard on there. And then we would give reports and, uh, and, and uh, enter it all in, give it back to the uh, building official, and he would put a report to send out to the public. Um, we did this over a course of uh, a week out in Estes Park. Um, and that's what our duties were. Join us tomorrow for the next edition in the Sustainability Membership Council's video series, Voices from Building Safety Month.